What's up? It's Chris Young. What do you say we talk about how to use some of the features on your new Heartland Pioneer? So let's start right up front. You'll notice I have this in my hand. I'll show you why here in just a second. You have the RAM tongue jack on this one. You'll notice you got your rocker switch over here on the right hand side that moves your power tongue jack up and down. The other rocker switch gives you the LED light. This is going to be found in the pass through storage of most of your Pioneers. This is the manual handle. Just remove the rubber nozzle on top put that in there and then you can crank the jack whichever way you need to go up or down. Now right behind we have our twin 20 pound LP tanks with the plastic cover and you'll notice right here on the gauge if you cut the tank on well we don't have any gas in that one and we don't have any gas in that one either or else this would go from red to green. So if you want to use this tank on the right, move the actuator to the right. You want to evenly flow them, move it to the middle, make sure both tanks are open and then it'll pull evenly from both or if you just want to use the one on the left, switch that over. Another good rule of thumb is on your cover right here, you notice how you have these little these little pull tabs right here, these little screw tabs to open up the access to the tanks. Make sure that's in the back. That's actually back here. If not, the wind could come and blow that open while you're going down the road. Put this through the pass-through storage right here, which you'll see with your pass-through storage, you do have the plastic clip and the covered seal finished off in there. There are some of your manual cranks, mainly for your PSX-1 stabilizer jacks. Now these are not leveling jacks, these are stabilizer jacks. Sometimes they are gonna be controlled by the toggle switch on the outside. Sometimes there will be a component box on the inside where the toggle switch will be. You hit retract to pull them up and you hit extend to bring them down. Now, if they don't move at the same time, don't worry about it, that's absolutely fine. Once one comes down, the other one will. And once you hear it make that noise, that's when you know to stop. If you do need to get some true leveling, put some blocks under there so that you can level. Now these do come with the Solera power awning that is uh, with the adjustable pitch, you'll notice here, you got the arm, you can actually pull it down to adjust the pitch when it is fully extended. But with the awning, you'll notice there's a little rubber nozzle up there. It's got a 17 or 7 16 inch bit on the inside. If your awning does not work with the rocker switches, you pop that little nozzle out and you control it manually by just using a power tool or, or you know, your hand crank. You got the solid steps leading into the pass-through on this one. Now, a lot of times with the steps, you'll see tabs that you can pull in or out. This one actually has a little switch that allows you to adjust where the legs go. You notice if you pull up and pull out, it moves back, but once it's down, it's not going anywhere. And you always wanna make sure when you're letting the stairs down, that A, it's even and stable, like if you notice, it's not stable over here. And you also want this part to be flush, because when this is flush, that means we can shut the door like so and if that's too high you won't actually be able to shut the door so just always try to get the steps as flush as possible come over here you'll notice that we have our rear stabilizer jacks once again we're going to retract those a little bit and you'll see it does control both legs plus you have the support bars on this one as well and there we go you pretty much don't want to go any further than that because these are once again not leveling 4x4 sewer hose storage is where your sewer hose will go there. I do have a tailgate on this one, which does come from the manufacturer. You just remove the pin over here on this side, pull it out, and that's how you lay this down. Backup camera is set up on this one. And while I'm back here with the Pioneer with the toy hauler garage door, let me just talk a little bit about that. You'll notice that at the top we have those rubber stoppers there, which are going to help when you bring the door down, you don't get the scratch and the door doesn't actually touch the surface of wherever your campground is. And you'll see these coils right here are what provide the suspension assist when lowering the door down. So when you come over here to the latch, you'll notice that a lot of them have this flip up, but you can pretty much really only go one way because of this lock right here. So flip that up to the top lift the handle, pull it out, come over and do the same thing on this one. And you'll notice these do have a little bit of assist, but you always want to be as careful as you can. Walk the door down slowly, get somebody to help you if you can. There you go. Whether it's the ramp or the party deck, now you got your garage door open. When you're ready to plug in your cable, the cable connection is right there. 
come over here to your terminations and you'll see black tank and gray tank handles are usually labeled and the way you open them is you just pull them. You always want to dump the black tank first and then do the, the gray tank. So that way it kind of cleans out what's left. But if you're hooked up to the sewer at a campsite like we are here, it, it's a good idea to actually leave those closed because you do want some water in that black tank or else you'll get what's known as a pyramid. Uh, the solid waste will stay there and collect and be much harder to, to flush out even if you have the black tank flush. When you're setting up your power, make sure to have this not only turned and locked into place, but make sure that this is screwed in. If you do have a cord that gives you the power light and you see that the light is on, you should be good to go. If not, always check the circuit breaker on the power box and make sure if you're using the 50 amp or the 30 amp that it's on. This right here is the back of our Dometic fridge, and you'll notice it has this little tube. That's because inside this fridge, which is a gas electric uh, with automatic switch, there is a little pan that collects the condensation from when this refrigerator gets too cold and the ice melts. This actually just allows it to drip outside of the RV. Back of your water heater right here, easily accessible by just releasing the little pull tab. And you'll notice to cut on the electric for your water heater, there's your switch right there. Some of the Pioneers will have the switch on the inside, so, but there's your manual switch right there. Here's your igniter for your propane, your anode rod. So if you're gonna swap that out, just make sure that there's some water on the inside. And if you wanna check the pressure or release some of the pressure to make sure you can change things or for winterization or dewinterization, just pull that tab right there, it'll release the pressure. And these two buttons right here are your reset switch. So if you do need to reset your hot water heater, just push those both at the same time. Fresh water connection is there, city water connection is here, and black tank flush is right here. If you are going to use the black tank flush to clean out your tanks, just always make sure that that termination valve is open because if it's closed and you go to put water pressure in there, not gonna be a good day for anybody involved. Back of our suburban furnace right there. And last but not least, I wanted to show you with the stabilizer jacks, You'll notice that over here on the off camp side, we do have a little hand crank. So this is the tool that's found in your storage compartment. And if you ever do not have power or if you can't get your stabilizer jacks to work, the hand crank just slides right on there. And that's how you do that. So with that said, what do you say we go on the inside and take a look at what we can do in there? Now on the inside here, let's talk about some of the features. Right away, inside the door of this one, we have the controls for our awning. Now that's Solera awning with the adjustable pitch. Here's how you extend it and retract. You push up to extend and down to retract. Pretty simple. Light switches are located throughout the RV. Right here on the campsite, we will have our booth dinette. These are great to reconnect with the family members, but it also converts down into a sleeper bed as well. So let me show you how to do that. First things first, you wanna lift up the table and get it off of the legs underneath. I'm gonna set this over here to the side. The legs you can store pretty much wherever you want to store. They do have some tips on the end to make sure they stay in the spots safely and securely. I'm gonna take these out because that's gonna be the sides of our bed. Now, this is where it does get a little bit of tricky because there's a lip underneath each side of the booth right here. You'll notice this wood lip. This is where the table goes that gives you the support. So however you wanna put that table in there to get it secure on the lip, there really is no wrong way or easier way. And then right here are the cushions for our bed. Let's push those in nice and snug. And there you go. You got yourself a little sleeper, great and convertible. Over here on the kitchen, you'll notice that we have our Greystone microwave right here. Obviously operates like a regular microwave. You have your hood for your range right here. The vent is on the outside of that. These do come with the Suburban furnace, or excuse me, the, the Suburban three burner cooktop. These are propane cooktops. You'll notice the grill style grate, high output on the front. And the way you operate these is you'll notice you have an igniter that tells you which way to turn. The arrow right here means you turn it this way. Do not turn it the other way. But to cut them on, over here to light, and then 
just cut the igniter. Now, if you do not get a spark or you do not get any cut, do you not get any flame when you cut it on, you wanna make sure that you check your propane tanks. A, do you have gas in them? B, is the one that has gas selected? Are they running? Is everything good to go? If not, you might have a problem with the igniter. If that's the case, bring it into one of our service professionals. They'll help take care of it for you. Now for the oven, like we have right here, this is the 17 inch suburban oven. Same thing, cut it on to, you got to push and turn with these to hold the igniter there. So push and hold. And once again, if you do not get any flame, just check that gas setup. Over here we have the Dometic fridge freezer combo. Now this does run on both gas and electric. It also has the automatic switch. Uh, so this is your on off button right there. There's for, if you want gas, push out. If you want automatic or electric, push in. Now you'll notice right here, this is the dial to control how cool and how warm your refrigerator can get. Move this down, the colder it gets. These blades right here circulate the air. So when you're stacking your refrigerator, try not to block these because this is what causes these fridges to cool down. The lower you go, the cooler it's gonna get. But once again, these fridges, they don't get things cold. They help keep things cold, cold. So try to get stuff cold before you put it in there because it's not gonna be one of those quick drop downs. Uh, for your freezer, you know, you'll notice that you got the space right there. And right here underneath my fans, my blades, is a drip pan. This drip pan leads to a little tube on the back. So when this defrosts and leaks down, it actually goes out of the back of the uh, fridge. Now, sometimes if you do keep this too cold, what can happen is this pan can freeze and all of a sudden you'll start getting water in the RV or in the floor. If that's the case, just come in, clean out the pan or cup, cut it up so that the pan defrosts. And what's cool about these fridges is they have the chalkboard front. So you can have some fun with that as well. Right here is our circuit breaker box. Now what they've done with some of the circuit breakers these days, especially on, on the newer RVs, they will have a little LED light. So if it's red, that means that that circuit breaker is bad and you need to replace it. Coming on into the bathroom, we have this Dometic plastic bowl with the foot flush on this one. Now with this one, uh, sometimes if the seal uh, isn't if the seal goes bad on it, it won't keep water in the bowl. So a good rule of thumb to make sure you keep that seal working is go ahead and flush it. And while it's flushing, take some Vaseline or some grease and get around the bottom of that black rubber seal. And what that'll do is that'll help make that stopper stay in place and keep water in the bowl. Now our control panel for this one is located right in here inside the bathroom. You'll notice we have our water pump which you won't need to use if you're hooked up on city water. You'll only need to use the water pump if you're using the fresh. And you do have a six gallon water heater bypass on this one that runs on either gas or electric. Now, when you cut on the gas, that automatically cuts on the igniter for the propane heater for your water heater. The electric obviously just runs off a of regular power. But if you're gonna do back-to-back -back showers and you need quick recovery for your hot water, you can actually cut both of these on at the same time and it'll double heat the water for you. GFCI outlet right there, single surround tub with the controls, shower nozzle here with the on off switch right there. So if you wanna go from shower to tub, you have the knob right there and the control knob right here as well for your shower. What that does, that just changes the flow of the water that comes out. Now, hopefully Bob, you can get down there and see this. This one does have a control valve right here for the water for the toilet. So if you do have a leak, you can actually cut that off right there. The bunk model, you'll see your bunks right there. Some of them have storage underneath, which you will be noticed by the little pull hole right here. Now, our entertainment centers, sometimes you have the linear, sometimes you have the IRV technologies. They pretty much all work the same way. If you notice, this one is unpaired, which means you can pair this up with your cell phone. It is near field. It is Bluetooth. All you do is you cut on your Bluetooth on your cell phone, like we have right here. And let's see if we can find it. And there it is right there. So you see the linear series app, the LS app right there. You hit that, 
and what it'll do is it'll try to pair with you and then you can control the entertainment from your cell phone or from right here. You also have the Bluetooth, the HDMI, the auxiliary ports, and it is dual zone, which means you can play the music both inside and out. Here's your HDMI cable for your TV to plug that in. You got your mount right here, your satellite or cable connection, and your 110. Now, for your air conditioning controls, this one has a 13.5 BTU AC and a 30,000 BTU furnace, which is gonna be pretty standard. You're gonna see the controls right here. Now, if you do not have shore power hooked up or your battery disconnect is off, this might not work, which means you might not get AC. And right here behind us is an example of the Mach 3 air conditioner with quick cool dump. Now this is ducted, but if you're in here and it's super hot, you wanna get some quick cool, open that up and you'll feel the breeze coming in, close them both off. And now we're coming through the ducts in the roof of the RV. Now these RVs do have pretty thin walls, so if it's 90 degrees outside and you got this set to 67 here or 68, a good rule of thumb is do not leave it on auto because the high fan is better. You leave it on auto, it's gonna cut off, cut on, cut off, cut on, which could make the AC freeze up on you. And that's not something that you wanna deal with. If you go to cut on the AC and you're not getting any, check to make sure that you do have it on cool over here first. You are plugged into shore power. The battery disconnect is on. The circuit breaker is working. And if you check all of that and you still do not have AC, you wanna bring it into one of our service specialists to have them help you get it fixed. One of the other convenience features here is a jackknife sofa. You'll notice this pretty standard in a lot of, of the Heartland Pioneers. Very simple to use. Just make sure to not hurt yourself when you're opening this up and pulling it back because with the jackknife sofa, it jackknifes out. You'll notice underneath, we have a little bit of storage Pretty standard, but just grab it from the bottom, push the top, fold down safely and securely, and there you have another sleeping area right there. Continue to make our way inside. You'll notice a lot of them have beds. You'll have TV and cable connections over there, which work the same way, TV backer locations. But these shades, if you'll notice, they're on a suspension strain. Now, over time, these will wear out. So if they do, just take your finger and wrap it, wrap the cord back around the knob down here. Just be sure you do it on both sides because what that'll do is that'll add tension to the shade and make them stay up as opposed to as soon as you push them up, they fall back down. And you want to make sure to do both sides because you don't want it going wonky and being all cockeyed on you. So hopefully that has helped you pick out some tips for your brand new Heartland Pioneer. Uh, Hey, if at any time you need anything, our service folks are here to help you enjoy that your camping experience is the best that it absolutely can be.